happened and I found out under very, very interesting circumstances uh, when uh, my lawyer, he informed me after I had been picked under interesting circumstances that I am also a human rights uh, defender. So being here, I think I have business here, being a human rights defender, still fresh from a holding facility. I'm not even sure I'm a free man yet, but I am actually impressed uh, that there are those other than myself or ourselves as journalists covering this who are um, certainly going to be recognized for their exceptional work uh, for and on behalf of those whose rights are being violated. I can tell you that I don't want to be telling the son about the rights of bald-headed men. Um, it is very hot and uh, it is uh, certainly interesting that we are out here. We've had quite uh, our own fair share in this nation of running battles with those who can't understand that humans have rights and when they do have them they are enshrined in in our humanness as beings but we'll continue uh, to make a case for human rights for as long as we are alive my name is samson uh, kasumba and i will be the host uh, for the function here at the residence of uh, the swedish ambassador here in uganda of course uh, it is under the auspices of uh, the eu here let me just share with you a brief background here the eu human rights defenders award is given each year and of course being 2020 covid 19 will not stop us uh, from uh, thinking and acting uh, human rights as uh, you will notice uh, the award recognizes uh, outstanding contribution uh, to and for the defense of human rights by human rights uh, defenders in uganda over uh, the previous 12 months so you can be sure we're back here um, 12 months from today individuals or organizations can and should nominate candidates for the eu human rights defenders award and uh, those award uh, nominations are certainly often and always welcome. And this year, uh, we are talking a collection of up to almost about 51 uh, of those that did come in. I will not take too much of your time. We want to run through this. You understand that these days when they are gathering, they are very small and we shouldn't be uh, long. We should not give coronavirus any chance uh, to catch any one of us. I've told coronavirus that if it catches me, I'll catch it and it will know that I'm no joke, I'm bigger than coronavirus, uh, um, to be honest. Uh, social distancing continues to be a big uh, feature there um, out. Uh, but uh, we'll certainly have uh, welcoming remarks uh, from uh, the ambassador of uh, the European Union here in Uganda, His Excellency Atilio Pachifici. Uh, he will be here. I hope I am not murdering names here. <laughs> Your Excellency, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Better you are. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Apilio Pesicici. I'm the European Union Ambassador to Uganda. Your Excellency, the Ambassador of Sweden, the Charge d'Affaires of the Norwegian Embassy to Uganda, our shortlisted um, human rights defenders, award nominees, uh, members of uh, the media and the press, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, our friend and master of ceremony, Samson, Samson Kasumba. It is a pleasure, it is a pleasure to be here uh, this afternoon at the residence of a friend, the Swedish ambassador. We are here physically in a small group to comply with the necessary restrictions set up by the government of Uganda to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic in Uganda. But a very large, a very large number of people is with us today watching this ceremony live in, uh, on the NTV uh, broadcast and over the internet. We are here this afternoon to recognize and celebrate the work of human rights defenders in Uganda through the Human Rights Defenders Award, which is given each year, every year, by the European Union and Norway. We are all aware that human rights are not advanced by themselves. It takes the courage, the dedication of women and men, organizations and institutions to advance this agenda and to ensure that rights become a lived reality for everyone in society. This is a constant struggle and uh, one that has become uh, even more important in recent years as uh, we have seen too many rights threatened in too many parts of the world. This is the work that is done by the human rights defenders and we take this opportunity to salute them for their courage and uh, dedication. Uh, this event is one of the most important in the, in the annual calendar of the European Union uh, 
uh, ambassadors and, and the European Union missions to, to Uganda and to Norway and for Norway as well. Uh, it's a moment when we are able to shine a light on the vital role played by the human rights defenders. Um, it is also a moment it is also a moment to remind ourselves that human rights defenders need to be protected in their work and that those responsible for attacks against them need to be held accountable. Unfortunately, during, even during the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen a continuing pattern of uh, attacks against human rights defenders in Uganda. This has included arbitrary, arbitrary arrest of community activists threats against journalists, and alleged torture in detention. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize the excellent work done by the Ugandan authorities to respond to the threats of the COVID-19. But I would also like to underscore the need to recognize that this virus cannot be beaten unless we adopt a whole society approach, one that recognizes that all Ugandans, including human rights defenders, have a role to play have a role to play and they must be protected in doing that. Human rights defenders uh, come in all shapes and sizes. The European Union internal guidance provides a very broad description, definition of human rights defenders, including individuals, groups and organs of society seeking for prom the promotion and protection of civil and political rights, as well as the promotion, protection and realization of economic, social and cultural rights. Human rights defenders also promote and protect the rights of members of groups, such as indigenous communities. Importantly, the definition does not include those individuals or groups who commit or propagate, propagate violence. This is a clear and an important point. The work of human rights defenders is wide-ranging. It includes uh, documenting violations, seeking remedies for victims, uh, the provision of legal, psychological, um, medical or other support, as well as combating cultures of impunity which cloak systematic and repeated breaches of human rights and fundamental freedoms. All this important work is done by the human rights de defenders. This work never stops and it has not stopped even during the COVID-19 uh, response. As many of you will be aware, the promotion of human rights is central is a central pil uh, pillar of the European Union external relations agenda everywhere in the world, including in Uganda. And this award is an important part of these efforts. This is the ninth year that the European Union and Norway have given the Human Rights Defenders Award. Past winners um, of the award have been recognized for their important work to promote uh, a wide range of rights and freedom, including the freedom of expressions, the rights of disabled people, and environmental rights. This year, three shortlisted candidates uh, are equally as impressive. Please allow me to say a few words about Aime, Damo, and Victor, who are here with us today. Aime uh, Moning is an outspoken human rights defender who has broken new ground was broken new ground as a leader of men of hope, the first organization of male survivors of conflict-related sexual violence, acting both at a national and at an international level. Victor Nalule is an active and inspirational advocate for disability rights, herself being a differently able woman. She, uh, when she is not working as health and safety advisor at Umeme, don't blame her for power cuts, <laughs> she's a dedicated, uh, she is dedicated to voluntary activism, seeking to advance the rights of some of the most vulnerable people in the Uganda society. Victor is the founder, founder of Tuna, Tuna, Weza, Tuna Weza Initiative, an organization that is currently also involved in ensuring the disabled women's and children's rights in the COVID-19 response. Thank you, Victor. Damon, the big Damon, I, I can say, it. yes, definitely. I hope you can accept that. Big Damon Vamara is a fearless and hands-on human rights defender in the field, the field of child victims and trafficking in the country and within the region. 
Damon leads the organization Dwelling Places, which is dedicated to the rescue and rehabilitation of street children, abandoned babies, and high risk in uh, and in high risk slum and uh, uh, high risk slum families in uh, in uh, in Uganda. I would like I would like to congratulate all three shortlisted candidates on getting this far. This year, we received over 50 individuals' nominations for the award, and. Uh, the standard was very, very, very high. So it has been extremely difficult to extract three, the most outstanding, among these incredibly fantastic 50 nominees. It's a difficult job. It's difficult every year, and this year has been even more difficult. So you have done extremely well to make uh, so far and this far to this uh, very, very competitive process. With that, I would like to thank all of you for your interest in the Human Rights Defenders Award, and I take this opportunity to assure you that all the, Europea of the European Union continued commitment to the advancement of human rights in Uganda and around the world. I will now hand over to the Ambassador Swede, who will announce this uh, year's winner. Thank you very much to all. Uh, the ambassador of the European Union delegation, the Chasse d'Affaires of the Embassy of Norway, our shortlisted uh, Human Rights Defenders Award nominees, representatives of the media, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'm very pleased uh, to welcome you all to the uh, Swedish uh, residence here in Kampala for this very important event both those of you who are here in person and those of you who are watching online or on MTV. As we have heard, the Human Rights Defenders Award is presented every year by the European Union and Norway to recognize the outstanding contribution by a human rights defender active in Uganda. We know that their active and uh, relentless efforts to protect and promote human rights for all are crucial in building a just and democratic society based on the rule of law. This year's prize is also given in the name of late Honorable Medi Kagwa, former chairperson of Uganda Human Rights Commission, to honor his important contribution for raising the issue of human rights defenders. We wish to pay a special tribute to late Honorable Kagwa this year because of his strong and passionate commitment to protecting and promoting human rights in Uganda as well as in the region. He played a crucial role in engaging the government of Uganda in international and regional human rights mechanisms and in ensuring the national follow-up of the recommendations issued. It was also under his leadership at the Uganda Human Rights Commission that the concept of human rights defenders was popularized and given due attention. For example, he set up a human rights defender's desk at the Commission to respond to immediate concerns of individual human rights defenders in the country. Further, under his chairmanship, an entire section in the annual report to the Parliament was dedicated to human rights defenders' issues. He was widely appreciated for his determination and achievements in the area of human rights. Now to the um, <coughs> nominations. As we have already heard, um, from among over 50 nominations, the EU member states, together with Norway, have agreed to award the prize this year to Mr. Aimee Isalaba Moninga. For, for his groundbreaking work with the male survivors of conflict-related sexual violence and abuse, he has put this difficult and sensitive issue on the policy and activist agenda 
in an unprecedented way. And he's also developing a generation of survivors. A decade ago, male victims of sexual violence were not being talked about at all, which makes Amy's contribution tremendously significant. Not only here in Uganda, but also on a regional and uh, on an international level. It is an area where not much information has been gained, nor experiences gathered. Being a refugee and a survivor of violence himself, himself, Amy has managed to mobilize many other survivors to speak out on this important but, all, but also almost unrecognized topic. Especially noteworthy is his ability to not only speak out and advocate for change, but also to contribute to solving the problems. For example, he's facilitating trainings with law enforcement agencies and medical professions, pro professions on sexual violence against men. His advocacy efforts, together with other institutions and actors, have yielded results. Now, for example, the police training curricula includes male victims of sexual violence and the police form for medical examination of victims has been revised to include both female and male anatomists. Being an activist is not easy, but being a refugee human rights activist in an area of rights that sometimes is not even recognized or acknowledged is indeed the sharp end of activism. This is why we are enormously proud to award Amy Moninga this year's European Union and Norway Human Rights Defenders Award. This year's award to Amy is also a fitting way to mark the International Day for the Elimination of Sexual Violence in Conflict, which is celebrated tomorrow on the 19th of June. This is the sixth time that the United Nations has marked this day, and we are pleased in 2020 to be able to add our voice to the international calls for an end to sexual violence in conflict by giving this award to Amy Moninga. His work shines an important spotlight on sexual violence against men in conflict, a problem which is often hidden and in which survivors are stigmatized. The UN Secretary General's latest report on this problem highlighted that sexual violence in conflict is a serious problem in several countries in this part of the, re of the world including the Central African Republic, the DRC, Somalia, Sudan, and Burundi. This highlights the importance of the work of AIME and other activists in this field. So it's now my great honor to invite AIME to uh, come forward and receive his award. For our audience um, uh, that is watching us uh, from wherever you're watching from, he may, as you heard, comes from the DRC, so he will be speaking in sharp, crisp French. And uh, being a Congolese man, you know a Congolese man from smartness, so you will see <laughs> a very smartly dressed man here receiving an award. He may, he bienvenue. Yeah, merci. Sorry, sorry. 
Bito en non. Oui, mais je ne sais pas. Il faut des paragraphes okay. et j'ai traduit. Ok. Good. Monsieur l'ambassadeur de l'Union européenne, Monsieur l'ambassadeur du Royaume de Suède, Monsieur chargé d'affaires de Norvège, chers collègues finalistes, Mesdames et Messieurs. Monsieur l'ambassadeur de the European Union, Monsieur l'ambassadeur de Sweden, Monsieur chargé d'affaires de Norway, fellow shortlisted candidates, ladies and gentlemen. Je réponds au nom de Aimé Moninga, je suis réfugié congolais en Ouganda depuis 2011. My name is Aimé Moninga Izilaba, I'm a Congolese refugee living in Uganda since 2011. Je suis le président de Men of Hope. Men of Hope, c'est une association au sein de laquelle sont regroupés les hommes qui sont passés par des violences sexuelles en zone de conflit dans des pays différents d'Afrique. I am the president of Men of Hope, an association of male survivors of sexual violence in zones of conflict from different African countries. L'association Men of Hope a pour mission de répondre aux besoins des survivants, se soutenir mutuellement et briser le silence, prévenir les violences sexuelles faites à l'homme et influencer les législations tant national qu'international à travers les plaidoyers afin de donner une définition légale ainsi que mettre des actions concrètes contre les auteurs de ces actes ignobles. Men of Hope's mission is to respond to the needs of the survivors, to offer mutual support and to break the silence, to prevent sexual violence against men and influence both national and international legislation through advocacy in order to give a legal definition as well as to take a concrete action against the perpetrators of these vile acts. Nous avons commencé cette lutte en 2013. Au début, nous étions très limités malgré l'initiative conçue. Dieu merci, Revidilo Project nous a aidé d'abord à travers les multiples séances de psychothérapie et conseils constructifs pour mener à bien notre lutte. Petit à petit, on commençait à établir la différence entre les étapes ci-après. Des victimes aux survivants, des survivants à un activiste. C'est à cette dernière étape que nous commençons à avoir une idée claire de la direction que devrait prendre notre lutte. We began this struggle in 2013. At the start, we were very limited, despite the initiative design. Thanks God, the Refugee Law Project helped us first through multiple sections of psychotherapy and constructive counseling to carry out our struggle. Bite by bite, we began to differentiate between the following steps, from victim to survivor, from survivor to activist. It was at this final stage that we began to have a clear idea about the direction which our struggle should take. Nous avons pris le courage d'affronter les médias tant ougandais qu'internationaux comme NTV, UBC, Al Jazeera et la BBC afin de faire entendre la voix de sans voix. We took the courage to approach both Ugandan and international media including NTV, UBC, Al Jazeera and the BBC so that the voiceless could be heard. Ce fut le début de l'expérience la plus coriace de ma vie. J'ai fait face à tout genre de personnes, d'une part ceux qui ignorent ces phénomènes de violence sexuelle faites aux hommes et d'autre part ceux qui consciemment savent que bon nombre des hommes passent à travers ces expériences odieuses. Mais suite aux habitudes sociales et n'ont jamais eu le courage de les dénoncer bien qu'étant mauvaise pratique. Since the beginning, this has been the toughest experience of my life. I face all kinds of people, 
On the one hand, those who ignore this phenomenon of sexual violence against men, and on the other hand, those who consciously know that a large number of men undergo these odious experiences, but because of social habits, they never had the courage to condemn them, although it is bad practice. Voilà les raisons de ma motivation pour devenir la voix de sans voix au niveau tant national qu'international, afin de trouver gain de cause au niveau des, des législateurs de ces deux niveaux. This is my motivation for becoming the voice of the voiceless, nationally and internationally, in order to find success at the level of the legislators on these two levels. Sur le plan national, nous avons effectué plusieurs plaidoyers via les tables rondes. Nous avons fait des, des formations avec les personnels soignants, avec, de, avec la police et l'armée ougandaise, spécialement les bataillons détachés pour l'Union africaine pour assurer la paix en Somalie. Nous avions aussi fait des échanges avec les étudiants de la faculté de droit de l'Université de Makerere à Kampala. At the national level, we have undertook many advocacy initiatives through roundtables organized by local service providers like HCR, Refugee Law Project, HIAS, Interaid, etc. But also at the level of personal caregivers, at the level of the police and the Ugandan army, specifically the battalion detached for the African Union for Peacekeeping Mission in Somalia. We have also held meetings in exchange with students, students of the Faculty of Law at Makerere University in Kampala. Sur le plan international, j'ai pris part à une conférence tenue à Londres sur l'impact de la stigmatisation résultant des violences sexuelles pendant la guerre en zone de conflit. J'ai été à la tribune des Nations Unies à deux reprises, à Genève et à New York City en 2019. At the international level, I took part in a conference in London on the impact of stigmatization and indesirable children resulting from sexual violence during war. I was at the United Nations twice, in Geneva and in New York in 2019. Bien que fier d'avoir atteint certain niveau pour faire entendre notre voix, je dois vous avouer que la lutte reste encore longue et difficile. Although proud to have reached certain levels to extend our voice, I have to admit to you that the struggle remains long and difficult. Je dois aussi vous avouer que j'ai eu à travailler avec des énormes lacunes et défis, le fait d'être réfugié avec des moyens modestes, d'une part le fait de travailler dans un terrain glissant avec plein de risques d'arrestation car les lois ougandaises ne reconnaissent pas les violences sexuelles faites aux hommes. D'autre part, la communauté dans laquelle je vis et la culture africaine qui nous traite de tous les maux. I must also admit that I had to work with huge gaps and challenges. The fact of being a refugee with modest means, the fact of working on unstable ground with a high risk of arrest because Ugandan laws don't recognize sexual violence against men, and because the community in which I live and the African culture which treats us with demeaning language. Aujourd'hui, le fait de figurer sur la liste des nominés des défenseurs des droits de l'homme de l'Union africaine en Ouganda 2002-2020 est un signal fort sur le plan tant national qu'international, non seulement pour nous, défenseurs des droits des survivants des violences sexuelles faites à l'homme, mais aussi pour tous les pourvoyeurs de services et aux donateurs comme signe de la prise en, con en considération de ces fléaux au même titre que la violence faite à la femme. Today, the fact of being included on the list of nominees of human rights defenders of the European Union and Norway in 2020 is a strong signal at the national and international levels, not just for us, defenders of the rights of survivors of sexual violence against men but also for all the providers of services and donors, as a sign that this scourge has been taken into account in the same way as violence against women. Cette reconnaissance est aussi un soulagement pour les femmes victimes de violences sexuelles, parce que cette reconnaissance crée aussi un espace de dialogue et un sentiment de confiance et d'harmonie dans les foyers. This acknowledgement is also a relief for women victims of sexual violence, 
because it creates room for dialogue and harmony within the household. Je termine par remercier en premier Monseigneur Jésus-Christ qui m'a protégé, encouragé et m'a guidé malgré les différences et les difficultés rencontrées. I would like first of all to thank my Lord Jesus Christ who had protected, encouraged and guided me despite the difficulties encountered. Je remercie l'Union européenne et le Royaume de Norvège qui viennent de donner un coup de pouce à l'activisme qui est ma mission. Ce prix est pour moi et tous les survivants de violences sexuelles une considération et une reconnaissance de notre lutte contre l'impunité. I thank the European Union and the Kingdom of Norway, which has just given a great boost to the activism, which is my mission. This prize is for me and all the survivors of sexual violence, a consideration and a recognition of our struggle against impunity. Je remercie aussi ma femme Sarah Mwenge et mon conseiller Claude Ipasso. I also thank my wife Sarah Mwenge and my counselor Claude Ipasson. De tout cœur. J'exprime ma gratitude au docteur et professeur Chris Dolan, le directeur de Refugee Law Project, pour son implication à tous les niveaux. Il a joué le rôle d'un mentor et d'un père. With all my heart, I express my gratitude to Dr. and Professor Chris Dolan, the director of the Refugee Law Project. For his involvement at all levels, he played the role of a mentor and a father. Ma, ma gratitude s'étend aussi au programme de genre et sexualité de Refugee Law Project, à l'instar de Onen David, Mogi Wakoraj, Winnie Agabo, Justin Ebiaou et à tous les staff de Refugee Law Project qui ne nous ont pas lâchés dans cette lutte et au rétablissement psychologique, sanitaire et psychosocial des victimes de violences sexuelles. My gratitude also extends to the staff of the Gender and Sexuality Program at the Refugee Law Project. On and David, Mogi Workorash, Winnie Gabo, Justine Biao, and all the staff of Refugee Law Project, who have not let us go in this fight and in psychological, sanitary, psychological recovery of victims of sexual violence. Nous disons merci aux membres du jury qui ont évalué et reconnu l'ampleur des efforts fournis dans cette lutte pour qu'aujourd'hui je mérite ce prix de défenseur des droits humains de l'Union européenne en Ouganda 2020. We say thanks to the members of the jury who evaluated and recognized the extent of these efforts made in this struggle, such that today I merit the prize of human rights defenders of the European Union and Norway in Uganda in 2020. Enfin, je salue aussi le travail fait par mes deux co-finalistes ici présents, Également, ceux qui étaient nominés mais qui, qui ne sont pas présents à cause du COVID-19 pour leur travail important de défenseur des droits humains. Finally, allow me to acknowledge and praise the work done by my two co-finalists present here, as well as to those nominated but they cannot attend today due to COVID-19, all having done a great work as human rights defenders. Je dis et je vous remercie. Thank you. Amen. Merci beaucoup. My grandmother used to say, Amen, travailler toujours. I sometimes regret having dropped out of French class quite quickly. But it's also because I had to choose between French and literature, and uh, you can tell where my decisions went. When we talk about defense of human rights, we also include you, because it's on the premise that human beings should be treated clearly differently from animals. And, and sometimes when I'm moving up and about, and I see persons holding uh, tear gas firing devices, and kicking others around, I ask, do they understand that these are human beings and not objects? It's one thing being ordered to do it, but uh, you, you get to understand that if you don't take cognizance of the fact that human beings should be treated differently, then you're going to end up in an embarrassing situation in which a gun went off 
and a bullet out of that gun, by the time it got to a human being, it turned out that the dead man was a son of a person in uniform. A gun went off in this town and copper out of it. By the time they checked the identity of the dead, it was a son of a police officer. So when we talk about defending human rights and acting responsibly, we are talking about saving the lives even of children in uniform. If we had followed what we talk about here, China would be alive today. You see, sadly, in this town, is even after words like this, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, again, somebody will dispatch a group with batoons, with guns, and again, they will go off. And again, we'll lose another human being. And we'll learn nothing. But I hope that uh, functions like these will change the modus operandi and will work differently. And uh, maybe on a sad note today, I was anchoring a bulletin and a 14-year-old girl, 14, 14, was gang raped and killed. 14, a young life, probably a doctor or an engineer or businesswoman, opportunity cut short. You watching this has a huge responsibility to do something about reporting these things and talking to anybody and everybody at dinner tables, at family gatherings and all, so that we just don't lose Ugandans or have them maimed because of what is preventable. A special, special congratulations um, to Aime and to Victor as well and uh, to Damon who have made it uh, this far. You see, in the fight against um, those, um, uh, against human rights, even getting to be nominated is a huge, huge victory. So there shouldn't be any sense of loss for both of you, Victor and Damon. You've actually gotten where I haven't gotten yet to be nominated. But I continue to try, perhaps uh, sooner or later, I'll get to that point as well. At about this time, we would like to bring in um, uh, some questions uh, from the media and uh, you could send some of yours online and uh, then we will deal with those um, uh, questions will be directed uh, uh, to uh, first of course Aime and then uh, to the others um, in quick succession so our partners in the media would like to bring you in uh, onto the mic to ask uh, a few questions as we continue to bask in uh, a nation that continues to improve. I like uh, uh, one of uh, the international organizations that says improving life for humanity, one life at a time uh, for us. One preaching human rights and converting, one police officer, one soldier is uh, good enough. And uh, also converting one reckless idiot wearing trousers pretending to be a man uh, going after our girls, if we can convert some of those idiots into human beings. I'm not going to apologize for calling somebody buttering a woman an idiot, because that's what they are. If you're not an idiot, why would you kick a woman? You're just an idiot. Donald Trump would say so. Just an idiot. I mean, idiot. <laughs> Good. So we'll have your name and then the media house, and then you shoot your question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm Olive Nakatuda. I work for Uganda Radio Network. Uh, Your Excellency, the European Ambassador, you're awarding human rights defenders at a time when the country is faced by a rising number of domestic violence and sexual abuse towards women during the lockdown. What message do you have to, to people out there? Well, thank you very much for this question. It is uh, extremely important. We have been discussing a lot among uh, European Union heads of mission about this. It is something which is happening all over the world. It is something, it's a situation which is it's new, it's uh, unprecedented. Uh, keeping people together, confined, in confined spaces, very often leads to tensions, to frictions, to confrontations. And uh, unfortunately, there are too many situations uh, of the kind you just mentioned, violence by the strongest by the men usually against uh, those who are more vulnerable, women and children. This is appalling, this is terrible, this is something where our societies all have to 
react strongly. Samson mentioned very, very strong words about these cowards who take actions against those who are unable to defend themselves in, uh, in an appropriate manner, who can maybe react verbally. And sometimes actually reacting verbally makes things even worse. So my message is uh, always about uh, trying to, all of us should try to understand that the world is facing a situation which is unprecedented. Nobody, no government, no ministry, no uh, government wanted uh, to put us locked into a small place and wait for such a terrible situation which has changed the way we live our lives uh, and which will change this way forever for good. Um, so we have to understand those situations. We have to exert uh, uh, prudence. We have to exert restraint con, uh, 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 and we have to behave as uh, human beings are supposed to behave. Um, when you have uh, these kind of situations, it's really impossible to, to comment and to say anything uh, than to express total, you know, it's something so appalling. It happens, as I said, it is very often the result of a special situation. We should all try to understand. I want to profit of this opportunity um, of the media to convey the same message. What you said is very, very important. It is uh, one of the most important challenges that our society faces. The government of Uganda has put in place very strong measures. One of them uh, is this, is to confine people, to restrict movements, precisely to re limit the spread of an enemy which is our common enemy and uh, in the process we should all participate to the efforts and not actually make things worse um, what else can i say uh, the words will not suffice to condemn and to express uh, our uh, total disgust and our total uh, and we are appalled by this situation we are definitely uh, considering doing something about it uh, and um, we have actually set aside a little amount the equivalent of 2 million euro, actually, which we intend to use uh, to support the civil society. I, I mentioned in my brief speech that there is, there should be scope, there is no solution to this global crisis unless everybody is involved. It is something which is applicable at a regional level between nations, uh, between continents, but also between uh, uh, different groups within society government, uh, civil society, uh, representatives of uh, even business. Um, so the idea of uh, participating all together to these, uh, to these efforts is, uh, is, uh, is crucial, is extremely important. We have identified these resources for a specific group, which is uh, the civil society. We have allocated much more money to support the government efforts. So somebody believes, oh, you know, you are always doing this, you always, no, not at all. In fact, we are first and foremost uh, allocating and disbursed substantial amounts of money to the government of Uganda. And many have criticized us for doing so. So ah, it's too much. This money will not be spent. I'm sorry. This is an act of respect and accepting the responsibility, the sovereignty of this country. There is need. We support and the fight and we support the needs of our partners. That is done. But we also understand that there is somebody else who has to play a role in this fight, and that is the civil society. This is us as well. So for the civil society, we have identified a couple of million euros, and we are now going through a concept table which should identify how civil society can help to address the needs of the, mas the most vulnerable uh, communities, groups, including, I would say, uh, people living in very difficult areas. Uh, it is difficult living abro um, in f uh, rural areas. I think it's much more difficult living in an urban area during a situation of this kind, during this crisis. So I don't want to uh, prejudge the decision that the team is uh, making to identify the best way to deal with those issues. But I hope we will do something also for the communities, which we already help, yeah? the distressed and uh, communities in, in big towns, Kampala being the most important. Them. I don't know whether these uh, response to the to the point you raised but i really felt it important for me to to make these remarks thank you for the question thank you so much my name is yudaya nangonzi i'm a journalist with the observer newspaper congratulations aime on the award in your speech you indicated that ugandan laws don't recognize sexual violence against men I would like to know where exactly have you reported the cases of violence against men? And secondly, what are some of the refugee settlements that you have been working with? And where have the cases been registered? 
could you also elaborate on the age group of men that have been sexually abused in the settlements as the president men of hope and lastly to the european union ambassador you you've awarded aime today but what comes with the award what's the challenge ahead is it just a plague what more is it coming with a cash prize is it coming with some travels is it coming with what exactly thank you so much how much is it? i think i think the master will start so i can okay. i can come after okay yeah. merci merci Amy. donc uh, oui uh, yes i will start and uh, and uh, I, I, I somehow gave for granted, but no, it's, tr it's true, it was wrong on my side. I, it's important to mention what this uh, prize entails. There, there is nothing really attached to it in terms of money. Eh? There is nothing attached in terms of uh, uh, concrete reward uh, for uh, the work that somebody out of their own will, out of their own motivations and visions are doing anyway. What we do is very little. We are just giving a little additional chance to people who have been working already for so long, so committed and, so, and doing so so, such an important work. We shine a little bit of light in the work they do. That's it. We give them a chance to present to those who have not noticed, who have not taken notice of this important work, to know about it. So it's not really very much, but for, my, for, for us, and I hope for, the, for those who have been identified for this work, it's uh, what is... Uh, it's, it's more important than getting a ticket uh, to go to, to, to Europe, to Sweden, or, which actually might happen because sometimes, you know, you work very hard and at the end the work you do, uh, I may, uh, I may, uh, we mentioned that he's doing something not just at the local level, not just at the national level, but at the international level. So this happens. The efforts and the hard work done by people is through this little ceremony recognized, a little bit amplified, but it's not going to add anything to the great merit and the great work they are doing. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you, my sister. To thank you, I will talk in English. But to explain your question, I will do in French. Yeah. I'm very happy for your question. That's why we are here. Ok, euh, la première question c'était pour savoir à qui on a reporté ces, ces cas de violence sexuelle. Euh, vous savez, comme j'avais dit lors de mon discours, nous remercions l'Union Européenne, nous remercions le Royaume de Norvège, parce que ce qu'ils ont fait c'est un coup de pouce à l'activisme. C'est une reconnaissance et une considération à la lutte contre l'impunité. Ce n'était pas facile, la lutte n'a pas commencé aujourd'hui. Ce que vous voyez aujourd'hui, c'est le fruit d'une dizaine d'années. On a été arrêté, on a été traité de tous les mots. Si vous avez bien suivi mon discours, j'ai dit on a été traité de tous les mots. Il y en a qui nous confondaient avec les homosexuels. Quand on parle de violences sexuelles faites aux hommes, directement, la société vous accumule aux homosexuels, on vous, on vous exclut même de la société, même de la famille. Alors, la communauté aussi, la culture africaine, alors la loi ougandaise, comme je, je disais, au début, quand on allait à la police, il y avait une confusion. On se posait des questions. Comment un homme peut passer par des violences sexuelles Parce que l'homme est censé être fort. L'homme est censé se défendre seul. Mais comment un homme qui est censé être défendu seul être encore, de passer encore par des violences sexuelles Vous comprenez Alors, ce sont des, des choses qu'on a dévoilées pendant des années. Et aujourd'hui, il est arrivé à un certain niveau que les gens ont commencé à comprendre au niveau de la police, au niveau de l'armée, comme je l'ai dit, au niveau des, des chefs du de quartier, on a, on, a, on a compris. Mais jusque-là, la loi proprement dite de l'Ouganda ne reconnaît pas. Pour la loi ougandaise, la victime, c'est celui qui a les le, le, le vagins. Et les le bourreaux, c'est celui qui a les pénis. Donc c'est-à-dire, un homme ne peut pas passer par des violences sexuelles. Au moins la femme, oui, mais l'homme, non. Je ne sais pas si je me fais comprendre. Ça, c'est la loi ougandaise. Donc, officiellement, ce n'est pas reconnu. Officieusement, nous sommes en train de travailler. Je crois que maintenant, ensemble avec l'Union européenne, on peut arriver à une solution durable. Merci.
I will try to uh, translate. So, uh, first of all, Amy um, wanted to tell that this uh, prize that has been uh, um, uh, given to him today is the is the result of ten years of work done so far. So he mm, he's adding on in this course that the big difficulty was to make uh, understand the context because any time. Aime and his fellows victims of sexual violence reported to the Uganda police or to the army or to any other authority, the difficulty was in the understanding of the case because according to the law, the, it is basically impossible to consider a man victim of uh, violence. Um, because the man is considered the, the strong one. So how can a man can be victim. Normally it, it is somehow, although it is very bad, but it is somehow a knowledge that the victim usually are women and men are the perpetrator. So often they have been considered homosexuals and because of the reason uh, they have been discriminated by both the authority and the community. Okay, je passe uh, directement. Oui, I can talk in English, I think. So let me try because I was a student with the refugee project, EFA program. So I can try my English now. You stay with which camp we did, we, we work. My, yeah, my, my, my association is, is basically in Uganda, in Kampala. So in Naki Valley, we have men of peace, which works with the victims. So we are, we are trying because we don't have money, you know, we, like I said. As a refugee, we have many, many challenges. So I have, I, I, I support to go to Chaka and other resortment to, to see how to work. But I think maybe a, 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 a European Union will make us a push to continue our work. So age, about age, we have all, we have youth, we have adult, we have elder. Yes, yes. We have youth who are victims. We have adults. We have also elders. And we have couples and we are also singles. I think I am very clear. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm told we have about a minute and a half uh, to end uh, the broadcast, um, but of course after um, we've closed the broadcast online and on television, uh, we will certainly continue to invite questions uh, uh, for um, uh, the panelists, uh, the nominees here and the winner, and of course uh, the officials here uh, from the Norwegian, the Swedish, and the European Union um, uh, who are here in charge of uh, uh, the process. I'd like to call the closing remarks. And uh, besides that, the, we will wind up uh, very briefly in about uh, 46 and a half seconds. Well, well, well. I, we haven't prepared the closing remarks, but basically <laughs> what I would like to say is very, very simple. It is. Uh, it is difficult to organize these events uh, in a situation in which we have uh, restrictions, we cannot move, but uh, at the end I think we put together the most important actors, I mean the center of this, uh, this uh, ceremony, it is uh, those who have been identified as the most meritorious and the best for this, uh, for this uh, particular event. They are all equal to my view even though one has been uh, given a prize, um, because the work they do is so much different and it covers issues which are so crucial, so important to the human beings, which I, and we found, we really struggled to identify uh, those uh, who were to be put in this uh, particular moment, in this particular situation, the, uh, the three nominees here. And even more difficult was identified within them, Aimee, without taking anything out of Aimee and without uh, uh, disregarding uh, the importance of uh, the work done by everybody else. So it is an important event for us, it is an important event which gives an opportunity to show to, the, to those uh, who are doing something else in life, 
and we are not paying enough attention. We would like them, everyone, to put a lot of attention on human rights to show the great work which has been done uh, in, uh, in Uganda. I don't know how many countries in the world are doing this. Uh, this was not a tradition in the countries where I served before, in Liberia, and there I can tell you, human rights issues, there was a problem. There were many, many problems. But we did not have this, uh, this uh, uh, award. It's something I discovered here in Uganda, and I was really delighted that my, co my colleagues had initiated uh, this, uh, this uh, tradition, and I'm happy to continue, to continue it. It is, um, it is an opportunity for all of us to talk about uh, uh, what is happening, and it is an opportunity for you to disseminate the messages that the nominees and, that, uh, uh, and the work they do is, uh, is, uh, is uh, sharing with us today. I would also like to thank Samson, who is a friend and who has accepted without hesitating one second to make he himself available pro bono, of course, because this is the, the good heart of Samson, to help us in presenting this event to the world. And I, I think I would like to conclude here, unless there is something that the host would like to say. Uh, no. Okay. Then uh, thank you very much for all those uh, who are in person and who are virtually here with us today. Thank you. There are quite a number of uh, gentlemen here. Uh, the reason I asked um, uh, my good friend, uh, the EU Ambassador Attilio, uh, to give the concluding remarks is, is simply because if you don't have a lot of time and it is hot as it is now, you call a bald-headed man to speak because they won't be very long since the sun is directly under them. So you can tell I also won't be too long uh, because the sun is directly over my head. What I'd like to continue to encourage you um, in defending human rights, um, for those of you who have house helps, simply because she works in your house does not mean that she doesn't have rights. Something as small as buying her sanitary pads is a good thing. Yes, she does earn a salary, but go an extra step. Simply because they are your stepchildren does not mean they don't have rights. I mean, protect their rights. Simply because she is female does not mean, and you're male, does not mean they don't have rights. Let's all get together in improving this great republic of ours, Uganda. Simply because we hold cameras and microphones and you are in uniform does not mean uh, we don't have rights. We could have been in uniform, but we are in a different uniform. So protect our lives and protect our rights. I don't understand how you beat us. Then you go home to turn on radios and televisions and buy newspapers and expect to read from us. We will catch you on camera beating us and, and you won't like it. <laughs> you won't like it. My name is Samson Kasum. It's certainly been a pleasure here. I'm so proud of uh, Victor here and uh, uh, Aime and Damon for their work in the defense. Uh, of human rights. Continue um, to defend human rights because we will be back someplace, I don't know whether here or somewhere else, certainly without COVID-19, um, to give someone else um, uh, an award for their work of human rights. I would like to thank the crew here who have done very, very well. I, I feel very, very good on cameras here. Uh, we'll continue the conversation here. A very good afternoon. We'll see you soon. If you don't see me, they'll tell you where I am. They always do. <laughs>